Hello everyone. Uh, today is our another new episode and I know that many of our audience is uh, very, very much fan of sports, sports science. And we have a professor Filhad from UITM and uh, he, is, uh, he is actually very much active in uh, social media. He's a popular uh, professor and he do a lot of interesting activities. So hello, uh, uh, Dr. Filhad, how are you? Hello, hi Sharif, thank you for having me here. Nice. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, doctor, can you please introduce yourself with our audience? Well, um, my name is Raja Muhammad Firhat bin Raja Azidin. I have, I have a very long name. Uh, I'm from uh, Malaysia. So currently I'm attached with uh, the Faculty of Sports Science and Recreation, uh, University Technology Mara, so somewhere in Selangor in Malaysia, in the, in the middle part of Malaysia. And I'm also attached with the UITM football club. Uh, we currently play in the top tier league in Malaysia, the Malaysian Super League. Uh, our first season in Super League. Uh, and I'm attached there as a head of sports science and performance. So monitoring and training these players to ensure that they are at peak performance. Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, doctor, basically uh, you have a different understanding in this COVID-19 period. First of all, I want to know, like, uh, uh, can you introduce about the Malaysian present situation in COVID-19 and how they good, uh, too much of good uh, activities in the COVID-19 period? Because in the global media, many people ask why Malaysia doing too much of good, how they do. It's incredible performance and they are doing very good. So um, there are many international audience, maybe they can know about Malaysia and Malaysia, how they do in COVID-19 period. And please introduce your training process and how, how you introduce these things with us? Well, Malaysia, uh, if, if you know where is Malaysia is, it's in the, in the Southeast Asia, a very small country, about 34 million of, of, of population. Uh, currently, we are, as today, we are about 8,680 confirmed cases only, with 97.8% uh, recovered. So around 8,490 now is already recovered. And we have a new 63 active cases, only two digits. And unfortunately, we have around 121 deaths, uh, about 1.3% of the total case. So, and most of the cases, about 70% of the cases is as, uh, asymptomatic. And I think we are doing quite well. If, if you compare now, I think around the world is around more than 12, uh, 12 million uh, confirmed cases. Uh, with 550,000 uh, death and around 7 million has recovered. And I think most countries as like um, in the United States, uh, in Brazil and India, is the top three countries now. Uh, it's heavily affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we, are, we are grateful because our government has, you know, imposed all the right standard operation procedures and regulation to ensure that the COVID-19 pandemic is in control. Uh, we have to thank our deputy, our health deputy general, Dato' Nori Sham, uh, our, our senior minister in the, for security, uh, Dato' Sri Ismail Sabri, and also we have to thank our beloved prime minister, uh, Ahmad Borohormat Tan Sri Dato' Haji Mayuddin Yassin. So these three person, I think they have, they have with the help of our you know, ever strong uh, frontliners has helped us to ensure that the numbers of cases in Malaysia is well under control. Uh, but I think uh, there is a lot of um, regulations and rules has been imposed in the past. I think in the early stage of the COVID-19, when it's happened, I think around March. So this is where I work in the university. So the university is closed during that time and they imposed the movement control order. So we shut down our airports, you know, people have to stay in the house. I think most of the people around the world has experienced similar um, experience. Uh, uh, at the same time, after a few months, we relax the movement control order. They call it a conditioning, conditional movement control order. So now we can, you know, people can start to, do, to go to the parks. Uh, people can start to eat in the restaurant, but in a very uh control and strict environment uh, and procedures 
and currently now at this phase so they call it the recovery movement control order so it is likely to be uh, less strict uh, you know um, in the past you can only eat in a restaurant at a selected times so, you know the it closed very early um, now you know you can just go in anytime you want but but still they are they are still uh, a very strict uh, regulation that you need to address uh, like you know people have to take their temperatures they have to check uh, their details in every premises that they went through uh, you know um, even um, there's a, 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 a partial lockdown if there's a, a heavy cases in a particular state or a place so but but Thank God, I'm I'm here in Malaysia. I'm I'm very grateful to be in Malaysia uh, because uh, the regulation and the uh, standard operation procedure imposed to us are very effective in combating uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So so thank God, I'm here in Malaysia. So I, I and I really hope that around the world we could fight this pandemic COVID-19 together, uh, so that you know we can share some of our experience. Uh, and then we can promote, you know, more healthy, more active, uh, strong population group to uh, beat the, this 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 virus. Actually, mm -hmm. yes, uh, doctor. Uh, beside that, I just want to add one thing because I have also experience in Malaysia. Yeah. Malaysian people actually very disciplined. I want to say. And they are very peaceful. How I see, let's say I live in uh, Subangja, I see that how disciplined they are. Even uh, when I attend in uh, uh, US uh, different electronic media, let's say IBM TV, I saw that a lot of tension they have. Europe has, North America has, but uh, how Malaysian people uh, like help government policy and procedures and how disciplined they are, how peaceful they are. Uh, th this is the great, great uh, example for for uh, for around the world. So that's why I want to give a big salute for Malaysian people. And uh, I I want to know because sports is a very important thing right now. But in a long time, sports is closed and um, many things happening. So how do you think? How do you think that different professional sportsmen they can come and uh, this is a big entertainment for Asia and around the world. What's your thought? Well, I think if globally, sport is a major contributor for not just economic, but also for social development around the world. So uh, with COVID-19 pandemic, I think most sporting events uh, has to be either postponed or cancelled. So it has a very big impact in the sport and fitness industry around the world. So I think for global uh, values for sport this industry is around more than 700 billion USD. So mm -hmm. that huge amount of money will definitely has a uh, impact for those who uh, will lose job or or at risk of losing jobs. And also, uh, uh, this job is not just uh, sport specific related, but it's also related with other industries which has a direct a relationship with sport yep such as you know tourism uh, you, you're looking at uh, travel industry you're looking at competition infrastructure so all these are uh, under huge amount of pressure and 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 as a sports person definitely you know you have to keep yourself fit at all times in regardless what condition uh at the center because you are in under contract so you have to exercise in very uh, limited space and limited access um, so it's going to be a little bit tricky. So, but you know, there's a lot of uh, recommendation now uh, being developed around the world uh, mm -hmm. with the help of scientific evidence-based uh, um, institutions, sports or exercise institutions, such as the British Journals of Sport Medicine. So they have some recommendation from the National Strength Conditioning Association. So this will definitely help uh, sports to progress uh, during this difficult time. And, and I also believe that um, now you can see there's a lot of leagues around the world has started to open up. You see the English Premier League, now they has already started back again. And Liverpool won their uh, Premier League now. So, and at the same time, you see Bundesliga League uh, in Germany. So they have started a little bit earlier. Um, the, the Tokyo Olympics has been postponed uh, 2021 next year. 
um, and there's a, there's a, there's a lot of other uh, sports like for example in Malaysia. So we play in the Malaysian Super League. Uh, the league below us, the league for the under 19, under 22, has been totally closed, as uh, because it's going to be very difficult to organize event at this uh, time. Uh, but our Malaysian league is currently is is will be postponed until I believe maybe somewhere in September or maybe earlier in August. So this definitely has some impact in the way we train our athletes. Um, you know, most of these athletes, are, uh, some of the athletes, especially the athletes preparing for the Olympics game, is a very big event. They have been training for the last four years, and suddenly it has to be postponed. And the training program also need to be rescheduled, uh, mm-hmm. and because and need to be modified as well because you know the type of training would be definitely different because the limited access uh, during training. So, but uh, I'm going to share with you guys uh, afterwards some of the. Um, exercise routine that we we normally do at UITMFC during the movement control order, where in most home base, how we, we monitor our athletes. Uh, at the same time, maybe I can give some recommendation if you want to start to do some exercise in the gym. If you are a gym owner, what kind of the standard operation procedures need to be done so that your members will remain active and also they are in a very safe environment. Uh, one of the things I just want to share with you, uh, doctor, like uh, I, I have experience to uh, uh, like one of the online conference with Mitsubishi and Stanford University. They are collaborating. And that time we find that uh, there is a big market uh, uh, and it will opening soon, like in-house training activities. Let's say we go for gym and we, we do different kind of activities and the gym equipment now people will buy in in-house okay let's say the treadmills and these things they will buy for their home cycling and by this way it will be the another issue another big market uh, for for the for uh, for the present situation so now what do you think like i want to know more like malaysian strategy like uh, what's the situation in malaysia uh, in the sports industry, how you overcoming or how you make a strategy? Well, I think if you look at the current literature from the British Journal of Sport Medicine, they've shown that there's a trend in Google search related with uh, home exercise. So means mm-hmm. people are uh, no because of COVID nineteen, people cannot go out. So some of them are encouraging to exercise at home, and they want. They want some information, so you know there's a search in people try to you know it's, it's, it it creates some oh, big awareness that exercise is important, and you also need to exercise at home. So if you look mm-hmm. at the Malaysian approach of physical activity, um, physical activities uh, engagement with the public, you see during the movement control order during the early stage, you know we are only allowed to exercise at home, only mm-hmm. for after a few months uh, we during the conditional movement control order. So that's a, a, a bit a leniency in terms of means that you can exercise in the park, but with a very strict uh, uh, SOP, but you can only run, long distance running, that's it. So there's mm-hmm. no way you can play football, there's no anything contact, you, you definitely you, you cannot. But during that time also, uh, you also cannot, um, most sports clubs are also closed. So you cannot go for any structured training. So it just mm-hmm. you training either you train at home or you train in the park, outside the house. Mm-hmm. So or then only running. Uh, in the house you can do a lot of other exercise routine, and and then now during the the recovery movement control order now now clubs have been given the permission to come back to the clubs and start to train in a more structured way. But uh, there's a, a a lot of SOPs which. Uh, make the train to be more safer means they has to go they have to train but only limited time about 45 minutes uh, they only have to train around uh, f- um, for 10 players and four coaches only so one session so they have to do three sessions because we have about 30 players in one team um, our national athletes now they currently train in the national sports institute so they also have to be quarantined there so that nobody from the outside can come in because they are uh, very uh, fragile and also high performance athletes 
So they've been training for the last four years for the Olympics and, and they, they need to be protected. So these are some of the measures that we currently uh, been doing in Malaysia, developing these SOPs. Our Ministry of uh, Sports and Youth, uh, Youth and Sports, uh, they are very uh, encouraging in developing these SOPs to ensure that you know people at home will start to exercise even during this difficult time. And I think now, I think coming ten, our Ministry of Youth and Sport, they have launched like a, a online fitness regime. Uh, they have like you no, know, they have like fitness celebrities. You know, they have sports persons doing online um, exercise routine, so that the public can follow them and to work out and being active. So this is this is uh, some of the um, some of the um, such, uh, uh, some of the procedures has been uh, developed by the uh, Malaysian government. Uh, I think it, it worked well with, with it, it, it's definitely worked well with, with us. And uh, I and I also believe that, you know, when you are a sports athlete or you are a, a high performance sports athlete, I think this is where you need to be more protected. So although right now in Malaysia, we have this, this our movement control order recovery is a little bit loose. So people mm -hmm. can go out to the restaurant and eat. You can go now. I think in the starting school going to be start on the 15th of July. We've, we've selected classes. The final year student can come back to the universities now. It's, it's going to be a little bit loose. But you know, if you are a high performance sports athlete, so, you know, there is no chance for you to, you know, go out in the restaurant and eat. You know, I, I, I would strongly advise you to, you know, to stay uh, at home and do your exercise routine. Uh, in in the in the in your institute, and at the same time, you need to really take care of yourself because you know your career is is online. So there's there's it has to be uh, all these athletes need to be well protected because, for example, for my team, we have thirty of us, and even the coaches, you know, they need to ensure that they are uh, always in the safe environment so that you know if you have one kid man. He got affected, and then he give all the shirts to these players, and you know, and everything is you no. Know, if you have two, three players got affected in one team, and then the whole team will be affected over time, then it's going to be difficult for us to play in the league. So mm -hmm. we have to be careful. Uh, I think one of the standard operation procedures, I think, very important that you know you need to. Uh, measure your body temperature regularly. So it means, you know, athletes who is sick, who have symptoms, uh, coughing, you know, they have shortness of breath and high temperatures, they have to go back. Uh, they have to have hand sanitizer at, uh, all the time. Uh, then the equipment need to be clean. That's very important also. And uh, before the training and after the training, uh, they should be scheduled in a way that you know, they will have like uh, only one entrance. So they come in one door and they go out in a different door. And then, then the next team, the next group will come in. So this is some of the basic procedures need to be uh, addressed so that um, everybody will remain in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. oh, one important aspect I just thinking right now, let's say uh, everybody now thinking about hard immune system, good immune system how is sports help to build up good immune system this is my first question and second question can you share some like uh, like famous sports in malaysia let's say uh, football badminton and, and this kind of things maybe maybe uh, different international audience they can learn more about malaysian sports culture yeah i think definitely I think you we, we need to exercise to to boost our immune system you know exercise will promote the white blood cells uh, will it will definitely help you to uh, enhance your cardiorespiratory fitness, your muscle strength. Uh, exercise will reduce your body composition. You know, it will definitely help you in combating chronic disease. Uh, and most importantly, I, I believe that you know people with chronic disease they have a higher risk of fatality if they can be contracted by the COVID nineteen virus. So you know, if you are obese or if you are overweight you have some heart condition you're asthmatic or you have some metabolic disease so definitely you are at high risk so not, not to ensure that you have a lower risk of of getting severity of 
the COVID-19 um, effect. So definitely you need to exercise. But you see, people who has, who is like currently is, is, is having diabetes. So he has to exercise, but um, it, it has to be in a very safe environment. So, so that, you know, if he want to go to the gym, so he have to ensure that the gym is, 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 is following the right standard operation procedures. Uh, if not, he definitely need to exercise at home. And if you look at the prescription for exercise programming for chronic disease population, it is definitely uh, very individualized and you definitely need some help from the expert, from the exercise, the clinical exercise specialist to help you with the program. I think that is very important, but definitely exercise will help to boost your immune system. It's very important. But what we don't want is um, you want to exercise, uh, but you don't follow the right standard operation procedures and you are making yourself at a big risk of getting contacted by the the virus so it is very important that you know you need to uh stay as as safe as as as, as possible if you look at um in malaysia uh we have like some of the our our, our regulation is we uh, there are some spots contact spots now is still prohibited from being played uh being played for example you cannot play football 11 versus 11 now you can train football but you cannot have like a match so because it is contact sport in malaysia is we also play good in badminton uh we also good in squash so there is a non-contact sport so definitely you can still play so uh, uh the the court is is open for the public um and 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 also uh it's very important also that uh if you want to organize events uh related with any sporting events right now in malaysia so we have not been given that permission so you know it, it will definitely going to start off uh in the later part of this year not sure maybe the football might start in september uh the badminton league i have i have no information on when it will start uh, but I think around the world it will be it, it, it will be similar. But uh, most importantly, I think these athletes need to train, and definitely they have to train in a proper way to ensure that they will at their peak condition uh, over time. So, yes, uh, this is this is very interesting. And side by side, let's say. Uh, Malaysia is a very good country and they are playing an important role in COVID-19 situations as well as in Asia Pacific when South Asia there are different countries they are now struggling and many more things even my friend from India uh, uh, they are also facing uh, uh, different kind of challenges and you know like uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka cricket and sports is very famous for them even I know that many of the like audience they say that we are eagerly waiting for sports and this kind of things. What will be the solution for next two three years? What do you think uh, in the sports area? Well, definitely this is going to be the new normal. So sports going to be organized uh, quite differently. Uh, when we're going to start our league somewhere in September, there will be no audience. Uh, only I I believe around thirty personnel plus players uh, per team should be in the at, at the stadium uh, and because of this new normal I think this is where we also need to modify some of our approaches especially in training uh, I'll give you an example now like, for example during the first MCOs so that we have to train at home I think I'm, I'm not sure about in, in India and Bangladesh now so are they staying at home they cannot go out at all Mm, uh, yes, I, I, I think uh, uh, India is step by step they're opening up their uh, uh, economy. Bangladesh, I think still um, they are following green zone, uh, then yellow zone, red zone, different approaches. Yes. So yes, different, different approaches they are trying to follow. Yep. Okay, so yes. if, if, if you are still training at home, so I, I give you one example. When we play our league, uh, we played uh, four games before the league stopped because of the pandemic. So we are in the competition phase. So mm -hmm. when the comp when when the pandemic happens, so the league have, have been stopped. So everybody go back to their own house and we train uh, them individually. Means that there's no team training. So you just individually they will start training at home. 
uh, we monitored them using like this uh, video conferencing. Uh, they have we we use also applications uh, such as you know we can use Trava so we can measure the total distance while they are training. So this is just like a report card. This is just like how we monitor this place so that they will definitely train at home. Uh, we also impose some regulation means that we, we do some fitness assessment online. So it can be done. Although in the past, we normally, they, they all, they, they're going to be tested in our high performance lab, but, but they can also be tested at their home house. So we modified some of, some of the uh, tests. And so we can monitor their fitness level over time during the MCO. So I think uh, if in India or in Bangladesh is still, you know, MCO. So this is some of the approach that perhaps you can use to ensure that uh, these players at, at, at peak condition. And I think for coaches during this time, you may have like two choices. Number one choice is either you maintain your, your training program, but you modify it but the intensity should be similar to the previous training program. Uh, although it's at home, you can be very creative. You know, sometimes, you know, you, win, you may not get the similar intensity if you're doing only one session a day. So perhaps you might want to do two sessions a day so that the load would be similar to what they've been exposed during the pandemic. And, and also, you also can, you know, what, what, what we call it the transition pace where <laughs> Around five weeks, most athletes are likely to train around two, three days a week. You know, um, the yeah. intensity would not be as high. And the, the main objective is just to ensure that the fitness level would not go down as as, as much. And then after the, the fifth, fifth week, you can start back again. So this these are some of the examples that you can do. But it all depends on when the league is going to start. It all depends on the objective of that particular team. Uh, the head coach need to also understand that, you know, sometimes uh, during this uh, uh, time, uh, athletes also will have a lot of psychology, psychological distress. So very important for them to be monitored. If you have a sport psychologist in the team, it's, it, it'll be good. And at the same time, you will notice that there's a trend in uh, changes, especially in the body composition. So this athlete stays at home and they start to eat a lot and they start to binge eating. You know, they spend most of the time on the handphone and they will also have some influence on their sleep quality. So mm -hmm. this needs also to be monitored. And uh, we have tools to monitor all this. Um, you know, if you have application free apps, you know, they call it sleep cycle. So easy for you to monitor the sleep pattern of your athletes uh, when they are at home. Um, you can use you know, GPS, um, indoor GPS uh, or, or outdoor GPS to monitor their training load. Uh, they have heart rate monitor. So it's, it's, it's now it's quite difficult to monitor this athlete at home by using all these available technologies. And some of these technologies is, is free. So you can get it online. So I don't think it's quite difficult. Um, but always remember that while while they are training at home or while they are training in a club, so uh, they still need to ensure that they are in a very safe environment. This is this is this is most most important thing. So regardless of whatever training program that you try to give to them, but if they you know they start to go to the restaurant, they start to go to the parks. You know sometimes if the the, the pub is open, they start to go to the pubs and. And they said one silly mistake, and they can get some. Uh, you, they can get infected. So, it's, it's it's very important for them to stay safe. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, doctor, one of the important thing that you are also a researcher in the sports industry, uh, UITM. How you contribute with your research? Uh, uh, what's the functioning of the research, and what area you right now focusing right now? So. Currently, I'm, I'm doing more research on football specific uh, fatigue uh, influence on injury risk, markers of injury risk. Um, and you know, with uh, fatigue, uh, the risk of injuries are likely to occur in a more uh, bigger magnitude. So uh, to help to combat the fatigue state, so everybody needs to stay fit. So this is also very important because, you know, during COVID-19, so with inactivity, so if you're two weeks of inactivity, you're going to lose about five to 20% of your maximal oxygen uptake or your, or your stamina. 
uh, you're gonna lose a, a, a high percentage of your uh, muscle oxygen uptake. You know, there's a lot of detraining effect that might uh, that might you know make you in a higher risk of getting injuries. So because of this, this research has shown that you know if you are fatigued, you have higher risk of injuries, and definitely you have to ensure that your athletes need to stay fit at all times, so that it will it will reduce the risk of injuries. And if you look at inactivity also, uh, for example, some of our research, we, we, we shown that uh, with a very congested soccer match uh, played in a week, it also have a higher risk of injuries. Uh, with high aceration and deceleration movement, so it also affect how the joint loading in your knees or in your ankle, so you have higher risk. So if you want to start with those information, if you want to start to exercise at post COVID nineteen, for example, so uh, for my for my 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 suggestion, you want to start training first day of training. So you should you know try to avoid any high aceration deceleration movement, um, multi directional movement. So because it will definitely have some uh, big impact on your how your joint and of uh, how your joint and muscle works. Uh, if you look at the Bundesliga, uh, they only give around two weeks for this player to train before they start the league. So only two weeks. So uh, at that particular time, I think the, or during the first day, there are around more than 200% injuries compared to the first day of training, uh, first day of match during the early season. So it's a very huge numbers of injuries uh, in, in day one at post COVID. Um, and you can see that they also change the regulation means that they can have five changes 89 percent of the team make those five changes but still the prevalence of injuries is still high so that definitely with if you look at that information so definitely if if we have time to prepare for this player so we have to ensure that you know these players are totally ready before they go for for the, for the match so what we the malaysian football league I currently doing now so they are doing the standard operation procedure so that it'll be more progress so because in malaysia we are thankful because our league will start in september so now we're in july so we have time so we have been training for the last four weeks so this will be our fifth week so and we can do it progressively so i believe that you know even if we start our league in august the prevalence of injuries are likely to be less lesser compared to what been ex, um, experienced in the Bundesliga. So this is where how you use research, not just my particular own research, but you use other studies. Uh, you look at the risk factors and you ensure that, you know, during training post COVID-19, you can use all those information to ensure that these players are, are, are totally ready. And if you look at some of our research, we look at um, the sleep, the quality of sleep. You know, um, and we have a few colleagues at, at, at our universities uh, looking at sleep pattern, and 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 you know, some studies found that uh, with sleep, a uh, low sleep quality will also will affect uh, performance and also increase the risk of injuries. And do you know during the movement control order, most athletes are at home and they spend a lot of time with their handphones. And it will definitely disturb their sleep quality. So, so we have to ensure that these players sleep early so that they can prepare themselves for the training. Uh, at the same time, we need to monitor their sleep so that we know that these players have a sufficient sleep, sufficient good sleep, so that when they start to training, so the risk of getting injury are likely to be uh, lesser. So this is, this is important. I think another important thing that we, we, we did some of st our studies related with the high intensity training. So, or, or incorporating functional exercises. So because of we have limited spaces. So if you want to impose intensity, which is similar to actual match play. So in, normally we train about one hour and 30 minutes max. So, but now we might have to split it into two because we have a very small space because there's high acceleration deceleration in a small space it may also uh, increase the risk of injuries so we have to split into two sessions one morning and one in the afternoon so uh we've we've putting that into account so it means that you no know, functional exercises 
high intensity training are likely to help them better. Uh, and also, it's been also shown that with high intensity training, you will, it will reduce the risk of injuries. Uh, but but always remember this, yeah. Uh, I'm I train high performance athlete playing in the Super League, so the prescription is, is likely to be different to if I want to train you, Sharif. So it's definitely mm -hmm. it's going to be different. I have to be more careful. So mm -hmm. uh, there's there's some assessment need to be done before starting the training program. So so that would be very important. So that no every training program is not. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of varieties in training. So how you want to make your training work better? So it's, it's totally different to, 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 to everybody. Yes, uh, this is very interesting discussion. One thing, uh, there are actually a lot of audience uh, uh, response. Audience, we are coming to you, no problems. You can ask your question and step by step, uh, doctor actually give all of your question and answer. Uh, Besides that, infrastructure is very important. Uh, uh, in sports arena. So actually, how uh, you want to explain the importance of uh, infrastructure, sports in infrastructure actually. Let's say you are running a football club and in that situation, what arena we should focus? Well, if I want to relate that with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, I'll give mm -hmm. you one example. If I'm working in a gym, if I'm the owner of a gym, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a club manager. So I have to ensure mm -hmm. that my club will definitely going to be safe. So what are the what are the common uh, standard operation procedures that I can suggest? I think number one is perhaps uh, I can limit the time of the operations. So, you know, if you are in the red zone, you might not want to open it every day. You might want to have a selected time, maybe three to five times a week, maybe alternate days so that one day you open, the next day you have to do all the sanitizing. Um, you also may perhaps limit the numbers of uh, your client or your participant in the gym. Uh, perhaps uh, depends how big is your gym. If your big gym is big, you, you can accommodate um, twenty percent, and also you can address the issues of social distancing. Then mm -hmm. definitely you can use that 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 number. Um, mm -hmm. You have to also ensure that you know the gym is is, is uses a one way traffic. So there's a one specific entrance and then they have one specific uh, exit. So they will not use the same exit and entrance. So it'll be safer. Um, you have also need to use arrows and directions so that, you know, um, your clients know where to go. And the arrangement of the particular machine also because of you are practicing social distancing. So definitely some of your machines need to also to be separated. Uh, a little bit uh, in, in, in the in the bigger distance. Um, in Malaysia, they have this regulation. So around three to five meters, if you are doing uh, dynamic kind of uh, activities. So um, if you if you're performing like a group exercise program, you no. Know, if 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 I'm a gym manager, so I have to make sure you now group exercise. I would rather them to do for them to exercise outside. So uh, rather than to exercise in the studio, because uh, in this, if you exercise in the studio, so there's a big risk. I think there's one case in South Korea. So one of the place that, you know, there's a lot of hundreds of people getting infected, just joining one particular group exercise program. Uh, so if you do it outside, uh, this is better. So less risky. But if you still want to do it inside, so it will, you have to ensure that it, it will not be like one meter per person uh, or or distant one meter distant, but you may want to look at three to five meters because it's 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 it's, it's very dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. You also perhaps need to close some of the section. Uh, for example, the cardiorespiratory station on the treadmill, the bicycles, you know, um, on the cross trainer. So you close that session so that you can organize sessions outside the gym uh, for cardiorespiratory training. So uh, that, that, that will definitely help them to exercise better outside and reduce the risk of getting infected. Uh, you have to ensure that all this, your participant um, has clean their hands at all time, especially after they use the machines. Um, uh, you have to also to ensure that, you know, uh, all these members and clients bring their own bottles, bring their own towels. Um, they need to take their temperature before they come in. Um, they also, uh, 
you have to, you, you also have to ensure your personal trainer um, have a less communication with their clients. I think very important because you don't want uh, uh, contact to contact kind of uh, communication um, because what we, we we don't want is is, is this um, uh, touching among personal training and also the client. And because of some of the clients need spotting, you know, uh, they need some help with the exercise. So these trainers can use uh, visual and also can demonstrate this exercise rather than to go very near to the uh, client. Um, you also, you know, some of the members, you know, you have this changing room, you have the toilets, you might want to close the changing room. You just open the toilet for limited access. Uh, you know, your client can definitely come in with their sporting attire. So they, they change from the outside of the gym. They come in, they have their attires already, they start to exercise, finish, they go back. So there's there's no chatting, you know, people want to do uh, warm-ups, perhaps they can warm-ups outside the gym. Uh, they can also definitely do some cooling down while walking towards the parking area. So it's, it'll be fine. So means that because the time is very limited, so you also need to be uh, ensure that the program is a very sufficient uh, a program which has demand that is sufficient enough to give some good adaptation to these uh, members. Um, at the same time, it's very important. So this gym need to have a very good, um, what call it, um, uh, a very good ventilation. Um, you know, the National Strength Conditioning Association, they have recommended relative humidity less than 60%. Uh, they need to have a good airflow. Uh, I think the most importantly, which I don't want to, uh, I need to remind, if you are in the, uh, if you are, for example, if I have a gym for the three months or two months, I've not been coming to the gym because of the restriction order. So I cannot go to the gym. So then when I go back to the gym, I definitely need to get professional help to get the gym clean before I start to open it. Uh, for the public because you know uh, there's a lot of issues related with uh, the sick building syndrome so if you left a gym in, in unoccupied and then there's a lot of issues related with bacteria and also um, uh, non-proper ventilation fungus that also have a huge reach for the members so and when you want to clean it you definitely need professional help so it has to be disinfected it has to be ensured that it is in a very uh, safe and clean en environment, so that once the the, the client come in, uh, it will they will be more protected. And mm -hmm. I think most importantly, if you are in the red zone, means that there's high cases in your particular area. So this recommendation need to be further uh, uh, emphasized, or you have to have to have more strict. Uh, kind of regulation it's because you are in the red zone. If you're in the green zone, perhaps you there's there's some 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 leeway. But if you are in the red zone, so have, definitely you have to be more stricter. So mm -hmm. it depends where is the venue. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, there are uh, very good audience response. Step by step, I will I will read on behalf of you. Anyway, come on Archer report. He is actually still from Australia. He ran also. He said this is a one a wonderful program. Hope you are well. Okay. My question is that, like Mr. Stila's question, do you see the final dimes of physical sports to digital or the rise of it again, since a reduction might cause a market demand for the type of sport? This is his question. Uh, Second, can, uh, can you repeat that again, Sharif? I, I, I couldn't hear you. Okay, okay. Uh, his question is that do you see this is the final dimes of physical sport to digital or the rise of it again? Since a, a reduction might cause a market demand for the type of sport. I think that he's talking about digital sports. Like what do you think? What will happen with the digital sports and the rise of digital sports? Then I fed those. Yes, I, I, I think there are a few questions. I, I just ask you, uh, fit those. Uh, she 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 is just thinking. I think player need mental training as well as training to get back in the game quickly. She's talking about mental mental health. Uh, yeah. Rana, uh, she she is he is actually supporting us a lot 
for our uh, uh, this uh, program and other things uh, he uh, he has a question how far reaching online training will be for getting back into the game quickly can we do something alternative like he's thinking about online training or do you have any other alternative uh, besides this uh, um, online training uh, i another question come from muhammad nur Ima, iman anu he said i have a question should all player need to go through a swap test every time they have to complete it in a game so uh, he is asking for swap test ankit he is from india he his question is that how we have to make sure spectators tells while watching live sports in st stadium that like he is thinking about uh, safety and security mohammad halim he is also concerned about crowd control like in covid 19 situation how we can count crowd control and other things let's see Sheriff, can I answer the, a few questions first? Yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I think the, the first question related with uh, the e-games e or e-sports, is it uh, there's a rise in e-sports because of pandemic 19? I think I I, I believe so. Uh, there, there is definitely there's a big uh, rise in uh, e-sports, especially now, it's been in Malaysia now, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, we have our Malaysian Football League, uh, the Super League and also we have the Premier League under 22 and under 19, all these professional leagues on footballs. And suddenly, now we also have our eSports in football. So, so it's, 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 it's evolved because there's, there's, there's a market there. Uh, but you see, I am a believer of if you play sport, it has to involve physical activity as well. So some mm -hmm. physical exertion. So although I believe the esports uh, industry are, are currently blooming, so it is also will definitely help the physical sports in the future as well. Definitely. Uh, you know, in a, some of the training being imposed by coaches also, you know, some you see a person like Messi, you know, all these big players, you know, they also play uh, PS2 football. So because, you know, they want to train mentally, uh, how they make the decision uh, based on that particular game. Uh, it's a, uh, we have like uh, augmented reality or the virtual reality kind of approaches now. So, so for professional football, they use the VR system uh, for training. Uh, this also relate with the mental training. So mental training, whether it's very important during, during this difficult time, during this COVID-19, yes, definitely. So if you have a, a professional team, most of them, they have their own counselor. So, you know, mm -hmm. this, this uh, we, we have some issues also with our team. We have four foreign players, uh, one from Lebanon, uh, two, two from France, um, because their families is at home. And, and now during COVID-19, so everything is look unsafe. Uh, so we need to ensure that they are in a good mental health. So, and there is also, there is, there is, um, also important that you know if you are a high performance coach you do some monitoring uh we have used the wellness score uh subjective rating so we know that how is the player's mood on that particular day the readiness to train for this athlete so monitoring is likely to be the keyword for to ensure that uh your players are likely to be in peak con conditions uh, we talk also about the online training whether it's effective uh i i i I believe whether it is effective or not is based on the physical activity or the right intensity used by the participant. So in my university, so I teach sports science, uh, strength conditioning and also fitness. So in the past where we have physical activity classes, so students are being forced to perform exercise routine, uh, resistance trainings, but now they have to do it at home. So it's online. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are currently doing a research. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the effect of online training with the, the students, with, with, with my particular students, and also looking at the, the, the effect of any activity after, after not being training at home. So uh, we have not found any, uh, there's, there's, there, I have not analyzed some of the data, so I've, I cannot share with you. 
uh, whether if effective. But uh, I believe based on the trend, yes, there's an improvement, definitely. Uh, but whether online training will help is, is based on that particular part, uh, participant. Uh, we look at also the swap test, yes. Uh, for our professional team, I, me, myself, the players, the officials, coaches need to undergo swap test uh, before we can start training. So that is the first regulation, swap test. But the in the United Kingdom, so they do the swap test quite regularly. So before the game, a uh, few days before the game, so they, they still have to do it. They are they, they're doing it quite regularly compared to what we, we've been doing here in Malaysia. I think because of the number of cases here in Malaysia, we have less cases. So this regulation, these procedures uh, will help us, but may not help if you use the similar protocol in the UK because the number of cases is, is, is different. So they have high cases. So swap tests are likely to be more frequent. So if it's, for example, in India, so if they want to start their league, so definitely mm -hmm. the SOPs are likely to be much more different to what we've been doing here in Malaysia. Uh, I think the last question, uh, looking at the spectator safety, how, how, how you can look at, um, I think this is where, you know, club managers or presidents, you know, the club players, you know, every, everybody in the club should have the social responsibility. Right here in Malaysia, there are coaches who urge so that the government can let the, play, the spectators come to the stadium because in September, we are playing with an empty stadium. So uh, the coaches are now urging so that the government have a very leniency so that these players can come in, maybe uh, a limited uh, amount of, 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 of spectators can come in and watch the game. But personally for me, I, I believe they would better off to look at the game at home. So as a, as a person who is heavily involved with uh, sports, and I don't want any of my my fans or my spectators going to be infected just by going to the stadium and watch the game. So especially if they are, you know, and then when they get infected and it's, 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 it's going to be very severe. So uh, if they, and, and there's in, if there's death, so, you know, who will be responsible? So if, for example, if they definitely has opened up to the public to look at the game, so it has to undergo a very strict uh, procedure, you know, social distancing, they have to check uh, the temperatures, and uh, at the same time, they also need to, to, to ensure that it is in a very safe environment. But, but, but always remember, I'm, I'm working with a high-performance elite athlete, so I need to take care of them. And also, I need to take care of the spectators. What we don't want is you got somebody from the spectators and they have affected and then they have affected the whole team or somebody from my team affected their spectators. This is what we, we don't want to see. And there's a lot of big risks. And, and, and we hope that, you know, we can, we can combat this together with a very uh, good op operation procedures. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, there are a few things about uh, mental health as well as alternative of uh, uh, online training. These two, two issues also come, yes. Okay, yes. so the alternate uh, alternative online training. So uh, I give you one example. If you don't want to do in online training, um, for my team, we use online training only once a week. So because it's a team sport, we get together, so we do it online. So we have coaches to monitor everything we did online. Um, but for the five to six days, uh, other five to six days, four to five days, so they train by their own. But they have to wear the Strava. Strava is application, uh, is in on the phone. So when they do exercise, they're running outside. So it will record the total distance. It will record the velocity of running, acceleration, decelerations. Uh, we can we can we can monitor it like. Uh, we, we, we can monitor the, the, the intensity or the volume of the training. So we, we know that these players are training at the correct intensity and volume. Um, uh, apart from that, I think I, I believe uh, uh, what the, the other thing that we also need to do if perhaps we also need, once we, once we impose all this training, we need to see the rate of progression. Uh, we need to ensure that these players are adapting well. So that is where we need to do some assessment to them, the fitness assessment. It, it won't be have to be like maximal assessment. 
So I give you an example. Uh, the three-minute step test can be used to measure cardiovascular endurance in a in a very set maximal effort. So it'll be it, it works fine with 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 the boss. So we don't want to have everything in high exertion. And uh, in fact, uh, when the players come back for training, we only start to do exercise uh, testing after the fifth week. So we give them time to train first, and then we start to test them. So what we don't want is we test them in the early stage of training because we know maximal exertion will likely to impose a greater risk of injuries. Um, did I answer all the questions? Uh, there are a few other questions. Uh, Araf, I think he's from Bangladesh. He asked, there is no substitute for mental, I think he's talking about subsidies anyway, for mental and how practice to get back to sports and practice. What could be the role of state and organization for player to get back to sports? I think it will be subsidies anyway. Second thing, Gordon, he said that would you also expect an increase in soft tissue injuries and a gradual ramp up in the intensity for the average person? So he's, he's discussing on the soft tissue issues and injury. And uh, Araf, I think he's from Bangladesh, he's asking for the, uh, uh, like, what's the role of the state and the organizations? He's asking in that present situation. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a sports psychologist, uh, but I work with mm -hmm. sports psychologists. So we have a sports psychologist in our team. Uh, you know, what we can uh, start to do is what we call the mental training, mental reaction, we call the, the, the practice in mind approaches uh, where they do mental rehearsal, they do coping strategies, uh, they do exercise program to reduce their stress and anxiety. So these are some of the mental interventions that can be done for these players as perhaps you know, one of your topics would, would also focus on the psychological aspect. So my expertise is more on the physical aspect. And when we talk about training and also reducing the risk of injury, the national uh, strength conditioning association association they have come up with uh, consensus guidelines of our transition period so safe return to training flowing in activity so they have this uh the 50 30 20 10 rule so this provide some percentage recommended re recommended percentage so that uh players can definitely gradually come back to training so uh, if you look at, for example, if this week is going to be my first week of training, so my players or my client who I train, so definitely will train at 50% of their actual total volume exercise before the pandemic. So 50% off. So first training would be very light, 50% of the total volume, less aceration and deceleration, less multidirectional movement, uh, you know, uh, and the second week it will be seventy percent, and the third week would be ninety percent, and then it will gradually increase until one hundred percent in the fifth week. So on the fifth week, this is where you can start to perform at a normal intensity, which you has done before the pandemic. So it takes around four five weeks for them to get prepared. But this is just a recommendation. While you're you do your training, uh, you. You, you will monitor your players and it has to be individualized. So some players adapt better, uh, some, some, some players not. So if they are not adapting well, so they might need a longer time to prepare. So what, what I can say is uh, training program are likely to be more individualized. But the 50, 30, 20, 10 rule, the National Strength Conditioning Association um, regulation suggestion, are likely to be very effective. I, I, I did it for my team. Uh, we are coping very well. Uh, there's less of injuries happening uh, with the team. Uh, I hope it will sustain over the period of the season. Um, you have to pray for me, Sharif, so that we will maintain in our Super League. <laughs> uh, yes, and, and I think uh, that would be the, the, the correct uh, the right recommendation. This is based on my personal experience. I think um, you know, the other experts, you know, you look at the BGSM, British General Sports Medicine, they have some other recommendation. But I believe the National Strength Conditioning Association recommendation are likely to be more specific to what I'm currently doing. And even they also recommend about the work rest ratios 
uh, recovery period. For example, in the first week, you have one to four ratios. Means that if you exercise at one minute, you do a, a one in activity for one minute, you might want to rest for four minutes and then you start the second set. So, and the next, the second week, you might want to go for one to three. Means that one minute exercise, three minute rest. So you see how it progressed. So with uh, the rate of progression, which is very controlled and also um, it, is, it is very um, progressive and gradual, so definitely the risk of injuries uh, can be reduced over time. Because you see, Malaysia, we are not like in Germany, Bundesliga, they only have two weeks to prepare. So because they have two weeks to prepare, means that they come back and they do start high intensity training during the first match. So they have 20% increase in injuries compared to the early stage of the league. So, so but we are lucky enough, hopefully, because we are started a little, a little bit later. So I believe, you know, hopefully with the gradual increment intensity and volume of training, we may reduce the risk of injury because we have the choice. So some leagues, they don't have choice, but we have choice and we have to make the right choice for our players. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the interesting thing I just want to share, like beside that, uh, from my own observation, I find that sports is actually uh, very influential things. Let's say World Cup, football World Cup, World Cup. even a regional uh, uh, political issue, uh, like let's say in, in India, Pakistan, when we uh, saw that they have a tension, they start to play in cricket and then whole nations they become together so sports has beautiful thing it's not only a, like a entertainment and other things this is the way that all things we can make together and we can uh, they sportsmen actually very important things sports women are actually very important besides that i just want to know about the olympic situation what what do you think uh, uh, about the olympic uh, situation what will happen because many international activities now stop so what the future of olympic what do you think so i believe it is been postponed until next year um july or june i think but it is it, it has been postponed our malaysian uh sukma our uh, sports games also has, has been postponed until next year march i think uh but uh the future of sport is still there uh no people are still competing will definitely will start to compete only now the regulation are likely to be a little bit different athletes now train uh in a very different ways now so there's a lot of health and safety issues need to be addressed uh before training so there's a lot of strict regulation need to be addressed also uh need to be followed also uh, but i i believe the sporting event are likely to be more competitive now uh, because you see you know some people been training for the last four years for this olympic so they should be picked around this time because the olympic will start somewhere in, in july for example so but because of this pandemic and it has to be postponed so that particular person need to modify the training program uh, to arrange the training program so that he can pick again somewhere next year during the tokyo olympics so and that also will give some opportunities for athletes who is not prepared for this particular olympic at this particular period to prepare themselves better so that they can eventually perform well next year so so like my team we are only a university based team we played in the super league professional league so we up against all the big teams so because we have very talented players most of them are students but we have lack of technical skills uh, but with this pandemic, it gives us some advantage because we are picking up with the big boys. So because, you know, they give us more time to train so that we are, we are when the league starts in September, hopefully we are at the same power with the, the big boys. So, um, so this is where coaches need to ensure that now their players need to be picked at all times. Uh, at the same time, the training program and training regime also need to be uh monitored and, and and tailored made uh so that you know the program would definitely will help them to be at their peak condition during the olympics so mm -hmm. the, I, I i i believe uh that will be the way forward mm -hmm. uh, doctor uh, like i just want to know that uh what's the biggest strength of malaysian sports what do you want to share with our audience 
the the biggest sport in Malaysia, I think, is still is yeah. still football. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and 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 we have the one of the big team. Uh, I, 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 we call JDT Johor Darul Is is the biggest team, uh, in 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 our country. So they are they have set the 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 the, the football standard here in in Malaysia. Uh, but definitely how we gonna play football during the COVID-19 pandemic would likely to change. Uh, uh, you know, people would start to, 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 to not going to the stadium anymore. Uh, people, because they, because we're gonna play in a very empty stadium, uh, uh, it's good for the, for the spectator also because it's going to be more safer for them. Um, uh, this is where sometimes I, I believe there's gonna be a big issue related with the sponsors. So some clubs is already reducing salaries of these players. So especially also big clubs because you know the 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 sponsors are not coming in to provide them with financial support because of the uh, sporting industry has, has reduced over time. And 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 I also believe you know I always remember I always remember this because we are in the maybe the early stage of this COVID-19, we never know what's going to happen in future. We never, because now we have like double digit only cases in Malaysia, but it's next three months or next four months or next month, or maybe next week, it might have a surge in the numbers of COVID-19 in Malaysia because of the second wave or perhaps on the third wave, because until we found the right vaccine, uh, then we can really settle down a little bit on the, uh, right approaches to enhance our sports and fitness industry. Uh, if not, it's still going definitely still going to be uncertainties. Uh, we may plan that the Olympics going to start next year, but you know, if next year there's another wave of another different virus, so definitely it will be postponed again. And and for us, like in the university setup now, we uh, everything is online, so that's the new normal. So, you know, classes going to be done online, only practical classes so they can come in. So limited access, uh, same with football, as, you know, same with high performance sports and fitness. So training are likely to be more using technologies. Uh, you don't have your personal trainer in front of you. You might have a phone only uh, uh, with you using some apps. Um, uh, definitely, there's a lot of wearable devices that can help you perform uh, better over time to monitor your progress um, and this application also will help you to improve your quality of life. I think that's very important for people who want to engage with physical activity. Physical activity not just only improve your immune system, your general health, but also it will definitely will improve your quality of life. So you, we, regardless whatever viruses come up, so we still need to do the physical activity in a very safe uh, way so that we're not getting infected or we're going to get injured after performing these physical activities. Uh, thank you, doctor. This is actually a very nice discussion, very informative discussions, and it will be a very good strategy for any of the nations that how they should handle sports and these kind of things. My last question, what's your final advice for the youth? because there are many youth actually already joined from different countries from india from bangladesh from australia from usa and many other countries even from malaysia so what's your advice for the youth in that in that pandemic situation people has too much of frustration mental challenge many more things what do you think well number one for youth you you still you definitely need to start to engage with physical activity any program or sports of exercise programs, you need to engage with those kind of activities. I think this is very important uh, for participation in physical activities in youth are likely to build up more benefits uh, in terms of health, in terms of uh, physical health, mental health, uh, social responsibilities. Uh, I think most importantly also that uh, in for youth population group, uh, if you want to start to exercise, you have to make sure that you exercise safely. Uh, you know the right prescription of exercise, so you might want to work with experts uh, on the right prescription exercise program for youth. Uh, I, I think the most importantly, I think now for now, if you want to engage with sports, if you want to engage with high performance sports, if your dream is to become an athlete 
or become somebody is very popular with sports. So number one, most importantly, is to ensure that you have the good academic background as well. So this is very important. So you know, mm -hmm. you if you want to miss school because of you playing football, so make sure you catch up again so that you won't miss school mm -hmm. and you can still play football. So in Malaysia, in, in my universities, uh, we have in my in Malaysia we have sports schools, and my university we offer sports science courses. So we offer these courses from diploma until PhDs for sports athletes. So they can train, and they can they have some flexibility in terms of how many years they can complete their degrees. You know the classes are a little bit more different. So you still need to engage with education, a structured education program. So being a youth, uh, this very difficult time. So uh, information related with uh, higher degrees, you know, I likely to help you better in this challenging world. Yes, I appreciate. I appreciate your comments. Even from my personal experience, I saw, uh, let's say, uh, from India, Onil Kumbhe was a very good student from Bangladesh. Uh, all of them are cricketer and very famous cricketers. Mushfikur Rohin from Pakistan, I think Saeed Anwar, all of them as a student, they are good, as a sportsman, they are good, and as well as they are a great human. So that is the combination of success. So right. uh, thank you, doctor. This is, this is very interesting discussions. Hopefully we will, we will invite you soon in, in our policy discussions. And we have a global community from around the world. Hopefully your valuable contributions uh, can can okay. enhance the world talent economy forum. Uh, thank you for all of your contributions and especially uh, I request uh, because you have a lot of students. I know that uh, UITM is one of the biggest university in Malaysia. So we have world talent economy forum and our YouTube channels. Uh, many 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 good contents. Many many intellectual people uh, they are joining. Uh, uh, in our YouTubes and our videos. So if your student uh, want to get their guideline or anything, they can get their guidelines. And thank you for your brilliant contribution, doctors. It's very, you, very informative this discussion, doctor. You're welcome, Sheriff. Thank you for having me. So I hope everyone enjoyed the discussion. Uh, and hope to see you again, Sheriff. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum.